This is the plow, and Magnus Carlsen played it against none other than the world number one blitz player, Ali Reza Firuzja. This is the title Tuesday late event, and Magnus had just played this opening against Nihal Sarin, Gregory Aparin, and wiped them off the board. Now, why are we calling this the plow? Well, it does technically have a name, the Cadus opening, but forget that a second. Magnus is employing it at the highest level because he plows this pawn down the board and then releases this rook, the snow plow behind it, immediately activated. And the best thing about the plow is your opponent often does something like this, push the A pawn or the B pawn, give back all the opening advantage you just gave them. So Magnus ripping through the elite with the plow at the highest level, plus it rhymes with the cow. A great video done by Anna Kramling, if you haven't seen that one. So Magnus goes E4. He says, you want to give me the center, Ali Reza? Fine, I'll take it. Thank you very much. B5 from Ali Reza. D4 now. The players are rewriting the rules. Who needs pieces? Just push your pawns. Now we get bishop b7, finally some peace development from Ali Reza, pawn attacked, defended, e6 played, knight f3, c5, and Magnus supports his center. Knight f6 from Ali Reza, pressures the e-pawn, Magnus just covers with queen e2, and now the computer wants d5 here, play that structure, but Ali Reza takes. A bit of a strange move. I mean, yes, looks really natural on the one hand, but on the other, after recaptures knight c6, you've just given Magnus a great square for this knight on c3, which other otherwise here was going to have to do some Roy Lopez y maneuvering, right? You know, it wouldn't have been able to get into the game in such an active way. And now here's the other thing about the plow. You've weakened the g4 square, so your opponent might want to take advantage of that. But that's not a good move from Ali Reza here, because now he's moving the same piece twice, not getting his bits out here, and you need to get developed in chess, right? And after bishop f4 from Magnus, we get knight b4. His horses have just gone nuts, charging forward before development, not good. The bishop drops back, and after h5, Ali Reza trying the reverse plow. Magnus did a bit of this in the tournament as well, with great success. Magnus just castles with a great game, but he even could have gone d5 here. That's why the evaluation bar on the left is showing that white is doing really well. The king's in the center, the queen's opposite. That was dangerous, but okay, castles. Ali Reza now goes d5, sensing the danger. And don't think this game's a write-off, by the way, just because Magnus is better now. Ali Reza is devilishly tricky, as Magnus once said, especially in blitz. So e5 played, bishop e7, pressuring this pawn a little bit, so g3 covers it, we get queen b6, and now this is a great move from Magnus. A little time out, king g2, just nudging up the board, and this is prophylactic chess. Coming off the queen's diagonal with the pressure from the knight, and prophylaxis, by the way, the word comes from Greek, the root of it, because phylaxis means to guard against. So you're guarding against future threats. And the pro bit is from Latin, meaning before, so before it happens. So we get knight c6, hopping back, pressuring that center, queen d2 covering, and this is the key. You have to defend that weak base of your pawn chain. As long as you cover that and you don't collapse, you're doing well as white, especially because this bishop is deadwood on b7. So rook c8, now this is really cool. If you're in this position, what do you do? What kind of plan do you come up with? Do you shuffle around with your bishop, your rooks, or what? Do you change the pawn structure? Well, what Magnus does is knight to e2. Brilliant strategic move, reinforcing the d4 pawn and therefore threatening bishop g5 and trading off these ones to weaken dark squares. So queen a5 from Ali Reza, he wants to swap queens, but Magnus says queen d1. He's got time to decline it. We get g6, a3, queen b6 played, bishop d3, and now Ali Reza doesn't castle, he goes king f8. He starts king walking the king to some safety. If you ever king walk the king, you know you've made it in chess, right? So we get queen d2, king g7, and now bishop g5. Magnus following through with this long-term strategic goal, weakening the dark squares, classy stuff, b6 
bishop captures, queen captures, and Ali Reza again offers the queen trade, desperate to swap off. What would you do here? There's a right way to play and a wrong way to play. And the right way here is not allowing the queen trade and retreating back. You keep on attacking that weakened black king. So queen e7 on the board and now knight g5. Hopping in aggressively. You know, these squares being targeted by white. And this sets up now a positional threat which black can't do anything about. So knight a5 played, looking for queenside counterplay, but now f3. You do make the king a little bit drafty on the second, always has to be thought about. But you drive back this knight, and now there's only one move here, which is best in the position by quite some margin. It's a positional idea. What would you play here to keep your advantage as white? And the answer to that one is pawn g4. You're pushing pawns in front of your own king, but you're taking away the f5 square from the knight, and therefore it's dead. And this is dead. And this is sidelined at the moment. So that's why Magnus has such a big advantage. We see knight c4 played, targeting b2, but more great use of tactics, pawn b3. Because if this knight captures here, well, there's a problem. The rook can sacrifice itself, Queen takes, and then you start hunting that black monarch. If you step to the f-file, well, you're running into these kind of sacrifices. The pawn is pinned. So if you step back here, well, now you can take on h5 and start ripping open that king. You know, if pawn recaptures king h3, the rook's coming to the g-file. There's too many attacking ideas. The knight galloping in. So you really can't touch this pawn. So the knight retreats here as we see. Magnus goes rook a b1, defending this one. And now knight g8 covers the f6 square, desperate remanoeuvring from Ali Reza, and king g3. Many good moves for Magnus. Rook f8 play, defensive measures. The queen hops back to d2, hitting that knight, but now knight c6 and just pressuring the center a little bit. Ali Reza's tricky. Can he conjure something up here in time scramble? And if you're enjoying this one, by the way, do smash like, really helps me out. And don't forget to subscribe. You're more likely to never miss a video and hugely helps me out. Now after knight c6 attacking, we get knight f4. Four. More pieces flowing into the attack here, and you're leaving this pawn to be captured. If it's taken, then there's many good moves. One is queen c3, kind of then pressuring down the file, but you can even take with the bishop here, open the queen's attack. We won't go down the rabbit hole, because after bishop c8, covering this square a bit, you know, there can sometimes be sacrifices here, or sacrifices here. Now rook bc1 hits that knight, and Ali Reza just goes for it, stirring up trouble by taking on d4. And Magnus could do this move, and then attack the knight, but he doesn't. He goes queen c3 pressuring the knight like that, and where's it actually retreating to? It's trapped. So Ali Reza, queen a7 to cover that one, and now Magnus goes for it. He crashes through on g6, and this attack is breaking through. I mean, look at this trio of miserable pieces there, stuck on the back rank. So now the bishop is not captured. If you take, well, this is the killer move. You force the queens off, the rook recaptures, slicing down this rank here, and you have to actually go knight e7 and give a piece for the king to retreat. Because if you go king h6, most natural move, then you check from here, and the rook has to give itself up. Great game for white. Because if the king steps back, this is awesome. I just want to show you this checkmate. You can hop away with knight to h6. And this is mate in four. Now, if the king captures, it's mate in one. So to stave it off for the longest, you have to start chucking pieces. Even after you give every piece, the king still can't come here or here or take because of this amazing knight. So you have to capture and look at that for a checkmate using the pawn and the rook and the horrible kind of squashed position of that king. Just awesome. So the bishop, not captured. We see takes on g4. This pawn recaptures knight h6 from Ali Reza. You know, desperate kind of defense. Pressures here a little bit. Magnus gives a check. Don't take the bishop. Bang, mate in one. Brutal. So the king steps back. We see a little bit of repeat. Knight back with check. And here the players agreed to a draw. I hope you enjoyed this game. No, I'm joking. So the king steps back. 
Magnus carries on attacking with an awesome queen sack now. He smashes down on c8, taking that bishop, and Ali Reza doesn't recapture, or else this is literally mate in one. I mean, the number of checkmates in the air here is just ridiculous. The full army being thrown at Ali Reza. So we get knight e2 check. The king goes, the rook drops, and Magnus has mate in six with bishop h7, mate in six with knight takes here, mate in eight with this one, you know, it's all over. He doesn't find any of them, but okay, this is good enough, taking a knight. We get queen d4, looking to take here, stir things up. But now knight f6 check, king goes, and you just covered this pawn now as well, so you've got time to carry on attacking. Magnus takes here, and after the knight takes back on f7, there was literally nothing better. It was all awful. Magnus now plays the killer blow of knight e6, royal fork, forking all three of these pieces. That's game over. Magnus knows how to finish his dinner. Ali Reza resigns. So coming back here, give the plow a go. Let me know how you get on. I hope you enjoy that one. I hope you enjoyed this video and see another epic game of chess. Check out the video on screen. Thanks for watching and see you soon.